Hello everyone, I'm Thomas Burkhart with NASA Spaceflight and welcome to this week's Starship Update. First, a huge thanks to Mary at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter, a Boca Chica resident and NSF team member who documents Starship development every single day. All of the following photos and videos are from her unless otherwise noted, so thank you Mary. At the beginning of the week, teams worked to dismantle Starship Mark I, a very early prototype which never flew. While it mainly served as a manufacturing pathfinder and as a mock-up for the most recent presentation in Boca Chica by Elon Musk, it was also a piece of Starship history that showed how far Starship development has come already. Teams also worked through the first half of the week to prepare SN8 for its test flight and SN9 to follow shortly after. On Monday, SN8 completed final pre-flight testing, including moving the large aerodynamic control services as well as a full wet dress rehearsal. The vehicle was filled with propellant during a full rehearsal of the launch countdown, and at the end of the count, the vehicle was detanked and ready to fly. On Tuesday, the first launch attempt for SN8 was aborted just 1.3 seconds before liftoff. A problem with one of the Raptor engines triggered an automatic abort, and the launch was scrubbed for the day. The next day, SN8 finally took to the skies. After an abort earlier in the day, teams recycled the count and successfully launched the first high-altitude Starship test flight. The three Raptor engines roared to life to begin the vehicle's ascent. The beginning of the flight appeared to be stable and under good control. One minute and 42 seconds into flight, one engine shut down in what initially appeared to be an engine failure. But as it turned out, this was actually an intentional and planned shutdown to help manage the vehicle's acceleration as it burned more fuel and became lighter. At 3 minutes and 14 seconds into flight, a second engine shut down for the same reason. The third and final engine continued firing until the vehicle reached its targeted altitude of 12.5 kilometers. SN8 then began to fall back towards the landing site. This was the big test for the first full-scale Starship prototype. Would the unique aerodynamic surfaces successfully control the large vehicle during descent? And they did. The vehicle remained completely stable during the entire descent, using the drag from its horizontal orientation to slow down. When the time came, two of the three Raptors restarted in flight, beginning to flip the vehicle back into the vertical position to land, just as planned. As the vehicle turned, one of the engines shut down, and just after, the other's exhaust turned bright green, a sign that it too was failing. With the loss of thrust, Starship crashed onto the center of the landing pad, ending a dramatic but overwhelmingly successful test flight. After the flight, Elon Musk confirmed that the ascent, the switchover of the fuel system to the header tanks, and the precision aerodynamic control to the landing point were all successful. The cause of the engine failures on landing were not actually a problem with the engines themselves, but rather low pressure in the methane fuel header tank. SpaceX teams got all of the data they needed from this test. It was the first time multiple Raptor engines fired together in flight, the first time a full-scale Starship vehicle flew, and SN8 reached the highest altitude of any Starship test vehicle yet. And on the way down, this week's test proved that the so-called belly flop maneuver, taking advantage of aerodynamic drag to make an efficient landing, is completely viable. A huge win for the SpaceX teams. Congratulations to everyone involved. On Thursday, teams returned to the landing site to inspect the remains of SNE. Some notable SpaceX personnel spotted at the pad included CEO Elon Musk and President Gwynne Shotwell. Of course, since SN8 didn't quite stick the landing, there's still some work to do. Next up was to be Starship SN9, mostly identical to SN8, except for being built completely out of the newest stainless steel alloy, and for being completely assembled prior to rollout. Unlike SN8, which was rolled to the launch site in two halves and had its Raptor engines installed at the launch site, SN9 was fully stacked in the high bay, and even had its three Raptor engines installed there. Unfortunately, on Friday morning, an incident occurred which could preclude Starship SN9's test flight. The support structure which held SN9 vertical inside the high bay failed, and the vehicle tipped into the side of the high bay walls. It's too early to assess the total damage to the vehicle, the control services will likely need extensive repair or replacement. SpaceX teams have moved a large crane to the production site to attempt to save the vehicle, and at the time of recording, those efforts are ongoing. Once the vehicle is lifted vertical, the extent of the damage will hopefully become more apparent. It's possible that SN9 can be repaired, or perhaps the vehicle will be scrapped in favor of SN10 flying next. 
we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, components for future vehicles continue to appear, including stainless steel rings for the first Super Heavy Booster, BN1, and a new nose cone, with attachment points for flaps. Work on Starship's SN10 and SN11 continues in the mid-bay, and a new transport stand to replace the failed one underneath SN9 has been delivered. And that's all for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for all of your support. If you want to see more spaceflight coverage, feel free to subscribe to the NASA Spaceflight YouTube channel, or check out our new site and forums over at nasaspaceflight.com. And if you'd like to support what we do, check out our merch store with t-shirts and other cool NSF gear. Or join the YouTube membership program with perks like a members-only Discord server with the NSF team and access to early preview videos. And as always, tell us what you think of these videos in the comments. With your help, we're able to continue to improve all of our content. And finally, thank you again to Mary for her incredible work documenting the historical development of Starship. Until next week, this is Thomas Burkhardt signing off. See you next time.